Hi, so I'm here with Dax from What Boy, uh, and today we're talking about Trials of Fire. <laughs> so, Dax, uh, what's the story behind today? This is the debut title from What Boy Studios. We only announced it last Tuesday, and we are super psyched to be here at EGX unveiling Trials of Fire for the very, very first time. It's a single player, turn based strategy game set in a post cataclysmic fantasy realm. Sounds good. So, sounds good! Sounds amazing! <laughs> I like his energy. <laughs> I also like his energy. All right, so uh, tell me a bit about the gameplay to it. Sure, so given that it's a roguelike, the stakes could not be higher. You start every run with constructing a party out of three heroes, but we're going to have a full gallery of, um, we're looking at eight to start with. So you make a party of three, and then you set off across a dying world in search of hope. The hope that you can save your forsaken people. The hope that you will endure in the vast and vicious lands of the realm. The hope that you will win this fight, if only to face another. And the hope that you will save those that you love in order to live and see the dawn of a glorious new day! So it's like a good it. game then? Yeah. yeah, it's not bad. It's yeah. Not bad. Well, you can see they've got charismatic people behind them. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you get a roster of heroes. Yes. Now, actual combat, since this is a roguelike, how does that go about? The combat is all deck driven. So each one of your heroes has a deck of cards attached to them. So three heroes, you have nine cards to start as they each randomly draw three per turn. All of your cards are then spent based on the willpower that you can generate. And you generate willpower by sacrificing cards. So if you were to sacrifice all nine of your cards, you'd have nine willpower, but no cards left to play. So the way combat works, it works is you sacrifice some cards, you play the rest, and then by the end of the turn, you might have one or two left over. You can always sacrifice them to make small tactical adjustments to your heroes and their positioning because as a multi-character combat layout, tactical positioning is really, really critical. Okay, so we've got a nice tactical position and everything works in a card system. That's so, right. I can ask, what was the inspiration for that kind of combat style? Well, Adam Doherty, who's um, the co-founder of What Boy, he's the driving, creative, brainium behind all of this. He's an insane, committed board game player. Mm. Um, he and I both worked at Rocksteady and all the Batman Arkham games as well, so oh, he's, wow. a, he's a really serious developer and, a, and, a, and, a, and an insane console fan as well. So I think the inspiration for him comes from um, not just the game world in terms of computer games, but board games as well as books. There's a lot of sort of choose your own adventure, fighting fantasy influences in the narrative as well. But building a system which is all procedurally driven, uh, so it's player driven narrative, and then the layout of the overworld and the points of interest you can visit being totally different on every single run. Um, the inspirations really do come from a wide range of sources. Oh, that's good to hear. Now, you were saying about the choice. Now, is this more just a narrative base, or will it actually have an impact on wider gameplay as well? The big choices that you make when you're crossing um, the realm is stopping off at different points of interest. They can either result in a fight going into a combat encounter, or they will resolve in a narrative encounter. So, quite often you'll be entering a town, and then you'll come up against some sort of a, a, a narrative um, construct where there might be someone that you need to kill in order to save the life of other people. So you're sort of um, faced with these moral dilemmas where in this lawless world there is no sense of sort of civil society. You are judge, jury and executioner, quite often executioner, um, but you decide on the morals in the moment. And it's really interesting because when you're feeling quite wealthy and you've got a lot of money and a lot of food and you're quite well off, you find yourself being quite generous towards other people. When you yourself are on the bones of your ass and you don't really oh, yeah, know if you're going to be able to survive, to then you're like, I'm just going to take everything that I can get. So that subjective morality plays a lot of uh, a big role in the emotion of the game because it really swings back and forth depending on your fortune. So I imagine that's a big part of the theme. Would you say the art style reflects that or was the art style more its own separate The art style, um, it's, we started off wanting to have a game that looked very colourful and very welcoming. But the tones are quite serious, so... So you have um, to darken up a bit. Yeah, but then, I mean, it's so easy to be like, oh, let's just make it grey, let's just make it brown. Um, uh, the, the additional challenge for us was having 2D cards in a 3D in uh, environment. We weren't, we were like, are these two things going to go together? Um, and just bringing in really, really talented developers, talented artists who can collaborate well on the 2D and the 3D to make sure, even though they're really different things, that they feel like they come from the same world. That's where the experience that we have, and, and luckily we just know a lot of fantastic artists who can help us solve that problem, and that's what we've done. That's good. Uh, so, any ideas for 
like, is there anything so far that you have not been able to put in yet that you'd like to see perhaps added later or that you're planning on releasing? Because I mean, I know you said that it's only been announced recently. Yeah, so. yeah. It was announced less than a week ago, so right now getting ready for EGX and unveiling the game has been our priority. But we want to get into early access uh, early next month, early in May, and then really engage with the community and focus on features and elements that are going to get a really positive reception. There's a lot of plans that we've got, but the great thing about early access is you can share it with people, you can say, oh, you know, what do you think of this? These are our ideas. So we're at a Does very that really early stage of development. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've been working on this for about a year. Um, we we're planning on about another 12 months in early access before we go to full launch. So that's being able to connect with the community and then collaborate on the creative direction of the game. That's where we want to see it go. Um, what sort of feedback have you got so far? It's been awesome. It's been two and a half days here at EGX. Um, loads of people turning up on Thursday and Friday, having only announced the, the game on Tuesday. We, we barely announced the studio as well, so really no awareness of what they're going to so get. So you really just came out nowhere, like yeah, the, just, dark, the Dark Horse yeah. ETS rest. <laughs> That's the way I think of it as well. Yeah, you know, that's a good way to think of it, though. But it's it's terrifying when someone says, "Hey, can I play a game?" You're like, "Uh, yeah. Sit down. Here's how it works. Do you like it?" And they're like, "Yeah, it works really well." Like that's such a gratifying feeling. Yeah. And for any new studio, any indie studio coming to a show like this, that's the best you can hope for is a really positive reaction from people who've got no reason to love your game. If they hate it, they're going to tell you, "Yeah, hey, you need to go and work on this some more." But the reaction's been overwhomingly positive. Oh, that's great, uh, so Just one final question. Are you planning to just Steam release, like you mentioned early access, or are you hoping to make release to consoles and such? Yeah, I mean, PC is our focus right now, yeah. but we're really thinking about, like, in terms of the interface, the control system, it would work really well on tablet. Um, I think consoles, potentially Switch would be amazing. So, so just get to as so, many people as possible. Yeah, there's so many more decisions we need to make down the track on that stuff, but our, our focus right now is on PC. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you for giving me this interview. My pleasure, Jack. Nice to meet you, Dad. We should do it again. We should. Do it again right now? We'll give it a couple of weeks. Okay, fine, fine, fine. <laughs>